Muhammad. There we go. Now you should be able to hear us. Good evening, Bio Nation. I hope you're doing well tonight. My name is Matt Williamson. And I am Corey McFan. And you are watching Married to College Esports. So tonight we have our Valorant team. They are back and they are participating in their next match in the Star League. It will be Cornell College. Everyone's already in the lobby. So let's go over a couple things real quick before we get started. So who's going to be playing? Your guess is as good as mine because we're... I don't want to say we're changing things up, but we're coming with some new uh, compositions and strategies for the different maps. So at least for the first map, uh, we will have senior uh, Spence Tenney, Spence playing. We will have freshman Walker Dale Wave playing. We will have senior uh, Dylan Poles Rez playing. We will have uh, sophomore Jasmine Smith Beanie Hunt Jr. playing. And we will also have freshman Tyler Rich Bubs playing. And then, of course, we have our head coach, Derek Games. Uh, but yes, so it is going to be best of three. We've already done the map picks and bands. So first map is going to be Bind. Uh, second map will be Icebox. And I believe if we do go to a map, it will be Fracture, right? I think you said Fracture. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, looks like Marietta will be attacking first on Bind. And I don't remember what the sides are for... Icebox. We'll, we'll find out when we get there. Uh, so while we are uh, waiting for that, we'll go over a couple of quick announcements. So uh, first, we want to give a shout out to HyperX for being the official peripheral sponsor for Married Ecology Esports. So they provide our facility with keyboards, mice, headsets, mouse pads, microphones. Uh, they work great. Despite what you think about the mic issues, it's a setting issue. We're going to figure out why the mic does mute on us, but it's not HyperX. I know that for sure. But if you would like to get your own HyperX gear, please be sure to go to hyperx.gg slash es. The QR code is up on your screen. I'm also going to give a quick shout out to Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Um, this past Tuesday, they did a uh, game night. It's actually a Married College student night where they were able to... Uh, Give really specials for pizzas. They have the switch up. They aired our matches. I believe they're doing it again tomorrow on Thursday. Uh, so definitely want to check that out because we'll have a couple of matches tomorrow. We'll have our Overwatch match at 7. And then immediately following that, uh, the, what's remaining of our uh, Rainbow Six match. So we got quite a few things going on. And I think I'm seeing the ready checks coming in. Yeah, so we should be starting up very soon. So as soon as they start, I'm gonna press this button. Then they're starting, so we're gonna get started. So we are on bind. Marietta will be attacking first. So let's see what kind of composition the pioneers are gonna be going with. Now, one thing that's sticking out to me so far is what Rez is hovering. A brimstone is a actually a very common pick but uh marietta does seem like they are going to go with uh two smokes this game so we'll see what they can do with that it involves a lot of communication you don't want to double sm smoke certain right uh, if you if you have both areas. people smoke in the same spot it's not very beneficial it kind of nullifies one of the smokes yeah so we'll see if they're able to utilize the uh their smokes and they coordinate well I, I just do find it interesting Rez is playing the Brimstone because he usually plays like Chamber or uh, something along those lines, but we'll see. I mean, you said that Brimstone is a very common, so I mean, how do you think his role would be in this map? Well, just about what any is sm Smoke would do. Just uh, uh, block off angles like sight lines that they might be holding, like high ground and stuff like that. But it does seem like both teams are going with two smokes, and they're going with pretty similar comps, actually. Just Marietta changed out the Sage with a fade. She's still waiting for things to load. So hopefully we'll be in here very soon. And something something went, went wrong. It looks like, it's like our coach, who was the uh, party leader, got booted. Oh, some reason he got booted. That's weird. I mean, that that happens. So we'll try again. 
Um, I'm gonna guess it'll just be the the same agents from before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, our coach was hosting the lobby and somehow it booted him. Typical Valorant, right? Yeah, typical Valorant. Typical Riot Games. <laughs> but alright guys, we'll try this again! Everyone already knows what they're gonna be locking in, so you just gotta select those. Yeah, just similar picks as before. It is a little strange that Marietta isn't going with a Sentinel pick this game. That is a little bit of a surprise. Uh, Sentinel is usually there to like lock down a site, kind of make it a lot harder for uh, attackers to get in. They are attacking first, so it does... It so maybe well, they're banking on trying to get a substantial lead while on attack, so then they don't have to worry about it so much on defense? I mean, maybe. Uh, but at the same time, two smokes could be just as viable. A smoke character can be just as viable as a uh, sentinel sometimes. They can play the same role. We will see. So first things first, can we get into the game or will the... Will there be another boot? Okay, we are in. All right, so Marietta will be attacking first. Well, it looks like they're gonna be aiming. Well, it looks like they may start closer towards the middle. Bubs is already going to be investing in the silencer. Wave and Res will invest in some armor. Mercy Spence is going to try to see if they can make anyone. Not going to find anyone yet, but. Did spot someone. We're gonna try to go for the blind. And Wave is gonna take that one, but Spence is gonna fall. Spike down B. So right now it's a 3v3. Wave takes a hit, has to fall back. Screen down. And right now both Wave and Bobs are a little bit low on help, but Bob's is going to be looking to planting the spike and will get it, but we have Junior Falls. I'll find you. Last player standing. Now it's just Bob's that's left and gets taken down from behind. And that will be enough for Cornell to take the first round. Despite their loss of that round, Marietta getting those trades back and forth, they, like, they go down and they get one off that. Even if they stay even on the attacker's side, it is still so much more valuable for them to even be even than and take down those kills, uh, take down the uh, opponents, their opponents, one by one. Simply because if you die on defense, it makes it so much harder for your team to, to defend. Yeah, so they were able to get the spike planted, it's just unfortunately they got picked off uh, at the end there. And it looks like there was a pause that's coming out, or something's up with the timer. Uh, they're okay, so it's a tech pause. Um, yeah, so Cornell's asking for a tech pause. There was uh, an issue with a headset, uh, so they're trying to get that working, and then we should get back uh, into it. But yeah, teams are allowed to have tech pauses in case there are technical issues. What's interesting? I'm trying to see if Marriott is in, at least investing in a couple weapons, but of course they're still going to have to kind of play safe for now because they are going to have that econ disadvantage. Well, since uh. Cornell won the first first round. They're able to buy for the second one, right? right. At it, least a light buy. It, yeah, it makes perfect sense. So even if Marietta loses this one, they are able to full buy next round. But Cornell will be stuck with uh, what they have for the most part. It looks like a couple of them are still saving, despite winning. 
the first or, round. Or it could be that one of them is having the headset issues so they haven't bought yet. Or that. Yeah, because I don't think they ever said... They just said it's a headset issue, but they haven't said who it is yet. So, still waiting just a, a little bit. But hopefully they'll get the issue resolved soon. So I'm gonna check one thing real quick on the settings. I think there is a feature that I have not really been using a lot in here. Oh, you know, one of these days I'm gonna learn how to do the controls here in Valorant. It's oh, only yeah. taken me like two months to figure out you just press the V button and you can get like the overhead spectator view like in, in Overwatch. This is, that's how bad I'm at this game. But yeah, so we can kind of just look around. Oh, you can even go through the build. Oh, you can even go through the buildings. You can't do that in Overwatch. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of use for that, but. <laughs> well, it's just easy to get the navigator around them and you can just fly through the buildings like this. Although it looks like the time uh, out has ended because we do see the timer coming down, so now we can uh, watch the uh, the players. But now we can watch it from a different perspective. And just so in case um, there's any questions about comp competitive integrity, we want to make it clear that we are on a three minute delay. Not no one else can hear what we're talking about or what we're doing. Um, and we're gonna see Bob's gets picked off very early. Spence was looking to try to catch someone. Does find one. Harry's gonna wait until that toxin pool goes away. But right now, Mirad is kind of pinned down at this point. We do see that Wave on Viper is kind of checking for any flanks, but no one is flanking for Cornell. So Spence and Winnie Hunt Jr. are going to get picked off. Rez will get one kill, but still, it's a 4v2 in Cornell's favor. But Rez will start planning. The Toxin Wall will come out to try to protect him. Does get the spike planted, but now there's crossfire in all sorts of directions. Rez extremely low in health. But Wave is hiding behind a corner, but Wave, Rez does get picked off, so it's just going to be Wave for Marietta. Toxins going up. And they're going to be using their own Toxin to protect themselves from Wave, and Cornell will take the second round. Once that save hole went up, it was quite literally over for Marietta on that round. However, losing the first couple of rounds is never the end of the world in this game. Anything can happen. It, it, and yeah. if they win this next next round right here without losing anybody, then that's going to give them the advantage later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we do see they are full buying at this point. So it should be at least more even in the uh, arsenal. Now Marietta is going to go with a little bit split in the middle. And Bob's is going to be peeking over. I'm not going to find anyone just yet. Meanwhile, Rez is kind of over by Site A, so it's interesting. The Pioneers are kind of eyeing scouting Site B, but Rez with a spike is just kind of hanging over by site A to see if anyone runs by. And... Launching smoke. 
but he gets taken down. But Winnie Hunt Jr. is there with the refrag. The bumps will start the plant. Wave does get one down. Actually, he gets two down. We're seeing that Bubs may be looking for a possible pick and does get one pick. So only one remains. And I'm still trying to figure out the controls here. But with that sky very low in health, I don't think there's much that Cornell's going to be able to do. Except dive to Winnie Hunt Jr.'s grenade. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's just what happened. <laughs> that is what happened. Um, <laughs> now, there is an upside to to having two smokes on your team. It, it means when I attack that one of your smokes, or even both of your smokes, if it, you have good enough aim, can be a little bit more aggressive. So, you don't have to rely on getting refrags from, like, an initiator or a sentinel rather the whole team can do it now because you don't have to worry about losing your smokes okay we see Marion is looking at site a root gonna just slowly work the way around the wave takes a little bit of a hit has to fall back so we see Marion is going to rotate around, but three pioneers are still checking to see if anyone rose by. Went into a building there, my bad. And meanwhile, Spence is going to be checking. And interesting, the Viper for Cornell does pop the Toxic Cloud. Marion is going to fall back, and it looks like they're going to rotate over to Site B. But they're going to get spot by the uh, the sky, but it'll be a one-for-one one trade. Still going to be converging over to site uh, B. And the Brimstone Ultimate gets used. So that actually puts Marion in predicament because they're running out of time. So now they're going to run over to site A. I mean, they do have enough time, technically. seconds left. Now Rez is going to start playing the spike, but it does get taken down, and so does Weenie Hunt Jr. going down. There. So I, mean, I don't think Marion is going to have enough time to plan at this point. Yeah, it was very unfortunate there for Marietta. Cornell just put themselves put them in a position where they really couldn't do a whole lot, even if they rotated they were already there on the other side ready to defend that side yeah we saw that cornell used two of their alts they used the toxin cloud to basically deny site a then they use brimstone's alt to deny site b causing barry to go back and forth running out of time and then they knew that Mario was going to rotate back to a and they're able to set up to make sure they can have time to plant here so cornell is up three to one Going to spot the the viper. Looks like Marina will rotate around, but there's a possible flank from behind. Rez is going to fall, but Wave's going to take down one. Bob's gets taken down though. And they just co just pinch the pioneers and take the round. Yeah, once they once they got shut down at that at that little intersection there there at showers, it was just free game for Corn oh, Cornell right there. All they had to do was like pinch in from three different angles, and they were able to take that round. Yeah, and you saw that they just just collapsed on all the sides. And part of it was just very being indecisive. They needed to pick a direction, but they just kind of stood there. Like after that first death, they just. My ult's not ready. It's like they didn't know what to do next. Yeah. 
Smith is going to try to move in. But he's going to get taken down. Wave takes a hit and has to fall back. Now maybe be a little careful over here. Fox and Wall comes out. That's gonna stall Marion a little bit. But Rez is gonna start playing, but he gets taken down. Spike down A. It's a 5v2. Wing Hit Junior does get taken down, so Wave is the only one remaining, and he's going to fall. And just another very strong round by Cornell. That was a great example of waiting to... You need to wait to uh, plant the spike. <laughs> you got to clear the site first before you're, you plant it. Otherwise, you're just going to get gunned down, and that's what just ha this happened to Marietta. Yeah, they've a lot of times been trying to rush to the spike without making sure the area is clear first and getting punished for it. Watch and learn. Looks like Marietta is going to converge over to site B. Wingyard Jr. is going to get picked off. Last player standing. And Spike all of them got taken down except for Wave, and he's going to get taken down while reloading. Grenade. Very unlucky uh, initial pick on Wingyard Jr. There, blindly shot through the smoke. Very unlucky. Very very unlucky. But that's going to expand. Uh, Cornell's uh, lead to 6 1. And it's looked like Marion might have to save a little bit, not be able to invest as much on weapons. the toxin wall and spent is going to fall to the brimstone but Rez is going to pops his ultimate too and Bob's gets taken down but wave gets one but still it's a 4v1 wave being the remaining one for the team he gets a kill but it's just hard to win a 2v1 fight right there yeah and where the sage went up a little bit higher, where his crosshair wasn't at. Very unlucky for him right there. I do see Marietta is full buying. So we'll see if they can take uh, this round. 10 seconds to go until it begins. So looking at maybe middle leaning towards site B possibly. See, smoke does come out, but the Marietta is kind of hanging out towards the middle right here. Wave is looking to try to get the pick, but the brimstone is going to back off. I see Bob's is starting to work his way in. He's going to see that it's blocked off and it's going to have to fall back. Toxin's 
Okay, well, we see the rest of the Pioneers rotating over towards Site A, a but Whitney Hunt Jr. is going to get picked off. Rez will get one, starts to plant the spike. Bob's is going to fall. He gets the spike down, but once again, he falls because they did not secure. Spence is going to pop an ultimate, gets one down, but he's going to fall, and Wave will get one. Looking to get, he's to get two more. Gets two. It needs to get the last one. Going up. Gonna throw up the toxin wall. Takes a hit. Gets taken down, but I think he delayed long enough. It's gonna be close. And just another second and they would have gotten it, but Cornell takes the win. Very close right there for Marietta. Cornell brought out the uh, resin, uh, the res from the Sage there at the very last second, and it paid off for him. Yeah, it came at the right time for them. Now Cornell is up 8-1. to one. Marietta does have two ultimates ready to go. See the smoke's coming back out again. And Wave's gonna get taken down, but Bubs will get a refrag. But he's gonna fall. Spence is gonna get refrag. So just one for one trades. But Rez is gonna fall, so it's just two left for the pioneers. Last player standing. And Spence was gonna fall, and he's not gonna see. Behind him, just another round to Cornell. Gotta check both sides of the road before you cross the street. Yep. If we need Junior had just checked that right side. going to be I in sight A. That's what I'm trying to see. He's going to spot the Viper. And we are seeing quite a few ultimates coming out for Marietta. But we know Junior's going to fall and so will Spence. Wave does get one. And he's going to get picked off. Wave gets one, but... Gets taken down while reloading. Very unfortunate to be caught out while reloading Last like that. In the half. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Winnie Hunter Jr. was not able to get a, a lot from her ultimate. Uh, I don't think Bubs got a lot of value either. Uh, the way Bubs died was very unfortunate. <laughs> they were both walking through the smoke. And it's just matter who saw the other first. You know what to do. So Marion does have the the Viper alts, and it's the last round before swapping, so they need to be able to try to see if they can get around. is trying to converge in. Wave does get one, but he is going to fall after that. And the Grimstall ult comes out, but Marion is dropping one by one. Rez, the last one remaining, gets one, but not able to get the other. Switching sides. Now Cornell just needs two rounds and they will take this map. 
So this is actually going to be a very important round for Marietta, because if they lose the pistol round, it's going to be really hard to take the second one. Very, very difficult. <laughs> they have to take this, this round, otherwise they are in a very, very, very difficult situation. Now, you were talking about the fact that Marietta did not go with any Sentinels with this composition. But now defense. they're on defense, and we were saying, like, okay, that's fine if they are ahead after offense, but they are very behind on defense. So how is this composition going to go while they're on defense? Well, they just got to play smarter than Cornell. That is as simple as that. They can't be making silly mistakes. There. Some things do come out. We see a 3 1 standoff right there. Those comes out. Weenie Hunt Jr. is going to get spotted and taken down. And Cornell's going to use this as an opportunity to plant the spike, and they will use it with the protective walls. And Wave is going to get taken down, but Bob's will get one kill. So right now it's a 3v4. But Rez will get one. But Bob's will get picked off. And a 4k coming from the sky from, uh, from Cornell. So it is going to be map point for Cornell. This is going to be very rough for Marietta right here. They have a steep hill to climb even if they take this round. They can't lose another round. They'll have to win another 13 rounds straight before they can take this map. I mean, we've seen quite a few momentum swings, so it's not impossible. But this round is going to be extremely difficult because they do have... I mean, it looks like they've bought whatever they can... Because I mean, you have to, you can't save this round. And it's going to look like that most of Cornell is going to be I in Site B. Wave gets one. He's going to pick off the uh, Brimstone as well, so that's two already down. But he's not going to get any others. Bumps gets another. But he's going to get taken off from the back. And Threads will also fall. So it's just Spence and Weenie Hunt Jr. in a 2v2. Spike, Spike does get planted. One enemy remaining. Weenie Hunt Jr. does take down the Sage. Very well placed grenade right there. Get the <laughs> got the viper low on health. Last player standing. And Spence does fall, so Winnie Hunt Jr. has got to finish defusing. And does get it. She goes down, but Marina does take the round. Very, very well placed grenade there by Winnie Hunt Jr. to get the vipers very low on health. Yes. May it, that put the viper in a position to where. They had to be very careful in peeking the, the diffuse. Because if they peek and they're not diffusing, okay, they're yeah. just going to die. Yeah. And because of that, we were, Marietta was yeah. able to get the diffuse just, off. It was just enough time to be able to uh, diffuse the spike. But as you said, it is still an uphill battle. It is still match point. It is going to keep being match point until Marietta gets to at least 12. Now we're seeing Cornell's going all in on Site B, or Site A, sorry. And we're seeing the Viper all coming out. We know Junior gets one, but she's going to fall in the second. And Cornell's going to start planning using that uh, Viper ult as coverage. Rez is going to fall. But Bob's is going to get taken down, so it's just Wave and Spence that's left. Spence does get one. Cat. 
He's there basically running out of time. They're gonna have to go in. Spence is the only one remaining. And he's gonna get taken down. Attackers win. So with that, uh, Cornell will take the first uh, map here. And we say that actually overall Wave did the best among the, the teams. Uh, average combat score of 325, finishing 16-14-2. But the, basically followed by the rest of Cornell for the most part. Um, it seemed like a lot of it was just Cornell getting the picks that they needed to. Yeah, for the, for the most part, yeah. But they also did really well on like with ability usage and coordinate it coordinating their ultimates. Like they didn't use them all at once. Or like that one round we saw where they used the one ult to deny Marietta, then use the other ult, make them go back and forth. So they were able to use their abilities to deny which direction Marietta can go. But alright, so I think we're gonna take a quick breather. Uh, and then we'll get into the the second map, which will be Icebox. So don't go away. We'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, and welcome back, folks. Uh, we're getting everyone into the lobby. We are going to be starting up game two very soon. Uh, it is going to be on Icebox. Marion will be defending. Uh, it looks like we made one substitution. Um, uh, edible Drywall will be coming in for Spence. And not to spoil anything, but I believe Marion has a plan with uh, with Icebox. I believe they do. Okay, ready checks are coming out and here we go folks so let's see how this goes we're gonna see res on the the chamber we need junior locked in the ko and edible drywall is bringing out the sova there are a lot of good sova lineups on this map right here and sage is being brought out as well from marietta Always a good asset, this yeah. age. Although, we may be seeing a mirror comp from... We just about are going to see a mirror comp from Cornell because they also have a Sova and Sage and a KO and a Viper. The only difference right now seems to be Neo versus uh, Chamber. Now, it is kind of interesting that uh, Marietta isn't going with a Duelist. It's, it it seems like they're kind of throwing away the whole uh uh one of at least one of each role at this point do you think it's necessary to have one of each role not necessarily uh it really just depends on abilities really every good like great team comp needs at least two or three of like a flash a drone or a blind. At least two of those. At least. Everything, just about everything else can just be flex. So as long as you have those covered, then you could just go with whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, so Marietta will be defending here, and I have a feeling this could be a battle of the Sovas with, with all the different lineups that you can have here. This is this map is really gonna show who passed geometry in high school. <laughs> We're gonna find out in about two seconds. Marietta will be defending first, and it looks like they're gonna be looking at site A. Now no one's over at site A, so the uh, the lineups aren't gonna necessarily work for edible drywall. But Rez is gonna teleport out. Knowing that uh, Cornell is heading straight over oh, to Site B, in fact, they're going to start planning using the Toxin Wall as cover. Spike planted. And just lots of gunfights back and forth. We need Engineer does take down the Neon though. Not ready yet. And Bob's is going to take down one. Wave may be looking to play from behind. Gets one, gets two. Remaining. There's only one left for... And that's three for Wave. Uh, guys? Do they have enough time? It's close. Okay, they got it. Very, very close. The, the Viper, uh, <laughs> the Viper uh, Molly there at the end kind of made that very tense. <laughs> I'd say, um, I think just another split second and um, it'd be a different result. <laughs> just because that happened, I don't even remember all that happened in that round. Well, so, Marietta caught that they were going over to site A, so they did retreat over, I'm sorry, site B, site B. They caught they were going to site B, they retreated over. Uh, they were very patient, waiting for the toxin wall to go down, and then they were able to get the picks. So now we're going to see, once again, looking at Site B, Rez deals a little bit of damage but has to fall back. But he's going to get the Neon down. Bubs is going to fall this time, though. And Wave going to take down the Viper. But Wave's going to be... I mean, sorry, Rez is going to be careful. He's getting collapsed on and has to fall back. 
but gets taken down while weird loaded. That happens a lot. Edible Drywall gets taken down. But we need Junior takes one down, so it's right now a 2v1. It's Wave and Weenie Hunt Jr. remaining, and it looks like the Sage is going to head over to Site A. And Weenie Hunt Jr. is going to get the killing vote, so Marion is up 2-0 right now. And I missed that. That's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Weenie Hunt Jr. on the KO is a little different than what we're used to seeing them on. But it seems like they're doing really well with the KO right now. Yeah, if you look at that, 3-1-2. Yeah, a very good KDA. But once again, we're seeing Cornell going all in on sites. B, but this time Rez is going to fall, so the rest of the Pioneers are going to fall in. And Wave takes quite a bit of damage through the, uh, the wall there. Junior does go down, and so does Wave. Bob's gets one down, but Last it's going to be very standing. difficult to do. Edible Drywall falls, and once again, it just seems like they get caught while reloading a lot, and that's what's costing them fights. In this game, you don't necessarily need an entire clip to get a kill. Or if you're going to reload, make sure you're in a safe spot when you're reloading. Because at least two of those deaths in just that round alone were while reloading. In this game, uh, uh, just it goes from like anywhere from one hit to five hits, I believe, with a vandal will get it get you the kill. Also. See, Rez is going to fall back this time. Cornell is still going with the all-in site B strategy. They will start planting. Spike planted. But we're going to see Wave is going to be looking to flank from behind, but he's going to get taken down. But he Jr. does get Neon, though. Are not able to take down this. Bubs tries to defuse with some protection, but not going to find it. And now we're going to see Cornell's going to tie things up. Cornell did a very good job of that, like getting on this site and getting a few picks and, and just securing that site and then locking it down so Marietta couldn't retake it. We may see the same thing. Standing ahead. But this time, Cornell's changing things up and going all in on site A. Wave does take down the Neon, though. And I think it was trying to use an ultimate. Yeah, we burned our ultimate as, as a result. So Wave getting two kills. And Sage is going to be using the ultimate to bring back the Viper. But Wave will fall. The engineer gets one down, but just a 2v3 at this point. Weenie Hunt Jr. is the only one that's left. He does get taken down. And that Sage Res definitely made a difference. Definitely. Sage Res and they were able to get the Viper pit up. So, 
And that's really what won them that round. Not the Viper Pit itself, but the res. The res to do the Viper Pit. Yeah. <laughs> Without that res, they wouldn't have been able to win that round, I don't think. I think you're right. I see Mary changing things up a little bit. Wave is going to be hanging out with Rez in case uh, they go all in on B, and that's exactly what Cornell is going to be doing. You are so now we're going to see the KO ult coming out for Cornell. It's a one for one trade. Spike planted. I cannot use that. And that KO ult is. Definitely preventing Marietta from being able to press forward, but now they'll be able to. Bob's just gonna take down one. But Fed gets 2k. The engineer gets one down, but it's gonna fall to the others. Very close round right there. That came down to just who was winning the gunfights, and Cornell just won it by two people. They are expanding their lead four to two. And see, Marietta's hanging out like Rez is kind of That's saving cool. a little bit for this round. Who will I spot first? They are but still gonna use the ultimate in anyway. Which isn't gonna do them a whole lot of good since uh, they all went to site A. I think Junior falls out of a drive well, gets one down, but still. Cornell will plant the spike. Bob's goes down, so it's just Rez and Wave that's left. Rez does get one with the ult, but that's going to be it. So just not a whole lot from it. And it was a no scope too. That was really impressive. Not going to lie. So Marietta started off 2-0, but then Cornell has been able to work their way back and take a, a decent lead. Now they still have three ultimates ready if they want to use them. I won't lose you all again. And we're already seeing that Viper Pit coming out by Wave. Using that to deny Site B, but... Cornell's going all in on site B anyway. Wave gets one, but gets taken down, so. You will not kill my Spike planted. Rez gets one down, but before he ends up falling. Bob's does get one kill. Very a little bit low on health though. But Mary is starting to run out of time, so they're gonna have to start getting some picks. And there's two kills right there onto Marietta. So Edible Drywall is the last one standing, and Cornell takes another round. Now it is a little odd that Marietta didn't use the res right there. They had a free res right th right there in front of them. And it was blocked off by their own Sage Wall. So, a little bit interesting. Yeah, I think it's kind of what we were discussing before in previous matches where they're just kind of afraid to use their ultimates, trying to get more value from them, and they just end up never using them.
I don't see Cornell's going to be right towards the middle, but heading towards Site B. Rez is going to get taken down, though. And the Silva ult does come out. Bob's gets two down, though, as part of that, but he's going to fall. Spike did get planted. So can Wave and Edible Tribal try to go and defuse? Wave does get the Viper down, so it's 2v2. And Mary's just gonna get caught and taken down. Once again, not checking their corners. Pulling out Util a little bit too soon. See the neon all coming out. The Weenie Hunt Jr. is going to get taken down. Welcome to my world. And Mary's just getting picked off one by one. Wave does take down the neon. Trying to use where the gunfire is coming from to see if it's final, but just off by a little bit. Standing ahead. The wave's gonna get caught, so it's just edible tribal that's left, and he's gonna go down. And there'll be another round for Cornell. Now the silver ball did come out there. Unfortunately, it was not able to get any value out of it. Just barely missing Cornell. With all three shots. Very unlucky there. Mm -hmm. well, Cornell will expand the lead eight to the two. Marietta still has two ultimates ready to go. Cornell's going all in on site A. Nowhere to run. And here comes the Sova ult for Cornell. Spike planted. And it's a two for one, three for one in Cornell's favor with that fight. Bobs does bring back Edible Drywall, who gets picked off right away. Bob's gets one down before going to fall on himself, though. But it's still another round for Cornell. Last round before the switch. Cornell is seemed to get one pick on Marietta, then just, Marietta just dropped like flies after that. Yeah, we saw the ultimates being used, but there's just no value from it. I mean, Sage brought up Edible Tribal, but as soon as he came up, they were able to pick him off. Very unfortunate there. I didn't even see the res go up. See, so Cornell's going all in on Site B. And the KL ult's going to be coming out for Cornell. There's just not much that res can do at that point. has faded. And we get a one for one trade. Rez falls, but Edible Drive won't get the kill. Down. 
There it is, got to go in, defuse. We need, but everyone just gets picked off one by one by one. I'm out of here. Switching sides. Marietta was in a little, <coughs> sorry. Marietta was in a little bit of a position where they, their hand was kind of forced. Like they were running out of time and almost all of Cornell was still alive. Yeah, it just comes back to the fact that they're just not able to get the the picks. But Cornell's just doing a better job with their gunfights and having that advantage. Standing ahead. Marietta will be moving in for Site A. Okay, let's pressure comes out, but it does fade. Toxins going up. Right, it's just kind of like we are talking about before. Marietta needs to win this round, or they're going to have a big disadvantage going into what could be match point. Wave does get taken down. And so does Edible Drywall. And Pioneers are just dropping one by one. I mean, Last player standing. Bob's does get a kill, but it's just him by himself. And Cornell will take another round. Not really a whole lot of ability usage in the first round, usually. Um, so it, most of the time it does come down to just the gunfight. And Cornell is just able to t win them. But yeah, it is going to be match point for Cornell. I mean, Marietta started 2-0 on Icebox, but it's been all Cornell ever since, taking basically a 9-0 sweep at this point. Now Marietta's going to try Site B. Is trying to advance further forward using the, the toxic cloud and the barrier to as cover, but gets picked off while trying to plant the spike. Bob's does get one down, but he's gonna follow himself. Edible Drywall gets a kill. It's a 3v2, but he's gonna get picked off, so it's just Weeha Jr. and Rez. Weeha Jr. falls. And that will be it. Match point. Actually, no way. I take that back. What am I thinking? Yeah, the game's not over yet. Sorry, <laughs> I thought that was the match. I thought it was match point. I am so sorry. No, <laughs> I was, I was confused on why you said that. I was confused too. I was. It's been a long day. I have been very confused. Understandable. Yeah, it's for for some reason I was thinking it was twelve, not thirteen. You just want the suffering to end. No, it's not that. <laughs> I just had a brain fart. It happens to all of us. <laughs> but still, it is going to be a critical round. It's then all uh, Cornell. The Meredith's need to find an answer. They're going to try through the middle. The wave gets picked off. And so does Edible Drywall. Grez does get one kill. But it's a two for one. Bob's is going to get a kill, but Rez will fall. Spike down, B. So it's just Bob's and Weenie Hunt Jr. that's left. And Mary's not even in a position to get the spike. Weenie Hunt Jr. gets one down. One enemy remaining. And two. <laughs> So now it's a matter of can Winnie Hunt Jr. and Bob's get take care of the Sova. Because right now Sova's trying to keep an eye on the spike. Mary in it? I mean, I don't know what Mary is doing. They're they're running out of time. They either need to go find the Sova or they need to go grab the spike and plant. 30 seconds left. And they find the Sova and he's got the spike. 
So he's just gonna go over and flank. Or Bob's can just take him out and take him out. That works too. That, that, yeah. Now, I did look very bleak for Marietta right there in that round, but they were able to, we, we had Junior was able to bring it back for him and get two kills, with giving them the advantage. And that was huge. And we'll see if that helps swing the momentum in Marietta's favor. So it is not over, folks. The, the score doesn't look great, but it is not over until someone gets to 13. Unless you're in your overtime, and then who knows how long it takes. We could be here all night. I don't think anyone wants to do that, though. No. But, all right, it is still match point. Marietta took the round, so... See, they're kind of taking their time on this one. They're going to start moving towards the middle. Use the Toxin Wall as cover. But Bob's is going to get picked off. And Wave is going to go down, so it's just three left for the Pioneers. That works. And then they spot the Neon. Winnie Hunt Jr. falls. Last player standing. And Rez goes down, so Edible Drywall is the last one remaining, and they're just going to collapse on it. Edible Drywall gets one, but not going to get any others. And that will be the match. So with that, Marietta will fall to Cornell. And I think just a lot of it came down to gunfights, uh, getting caught while reloading seemed to be a lot of it. Ability usage. Uh, but just Cornell playing very well as as well. Yeah, that and cor checking corners. That, that was another big one for Marietta right there that got them killed a couple times. Uh, yeah, so uh, that is going to be it for us for today. So tomorrow we will have two different matches coming at you. We will have our Overwatch team. Uh, as let me double check the schedule actually because I don't remember yeah so uh, Overwatch 2 will be playing against Highland Community College at 7 at the same time our Rainbow Six team will be playing against St. Clair College so what we'll do is we'll stream Overwatch first and then we'll get into the remainder of the Rainbow Six game so for all the latest updates with what's going on at Marion College Esports please be sure to follow us here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube Instagram, TikTok uh, shout outs again to HyperX and Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Thank all of you for, for watching your follows.